Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name's Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel here, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting or spinning yarn. In this episode of the Thread to Men podcast series, where we sit down together and I chat about the things that I'm making in real time, I have an exciting project to share with you all. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much here in growing this platform on YouTube. And if you enjoy this content, do give it a thumbs up. It helps so much with the algorithm. All right, let's go back, back to the beginning. This is the prototype to what is now become the opulent plunge bra, which I will show you in a moment. And this is a bralette tank top. It's not a bralette because it's a little longer. It's not a tank top because it's way too short. And this was born of an abandoned project. Um, if you are not familiar, I have a pattern for sale that is a hat called the linked hat. And I was envisioning an alternative version of the pattern one day um, with a different brim because I really love the double folded brim. That's my kind of hat, but I know other people like slouchier hats and that seems to be a lot more popular. And I thought, let me give that a try, but it just wasn't for me. So I stashed it in a drawer and then one day I pulled it out and I pulled it over my head and I thought I can make this into the bottom band of a bra or bralette and that it would hold the line as it were that shape at the under bust that I think that we're all wishing were there with knit bralettes a lot of the time even um well I actually felted the sample of my original bralette design the globe braid bra Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I, I knit this prototype. I did a few repeats of the linked hat kind of pattern and then I inserted bust shaping, but this was just fitting differently than I intended it to. And that was, um, it fits a lot like this, where this cross here of this cable comes right around the center of the chest. And although it looks nice, it doesn't wear best under fabrics, like if I'm wearing a shirt over this or, um, anything where you can't see the design of the garment, but you just have fabric over top of it, it kind of looks lumpy and bumpy. And then of course, like I really wanted this type of row where you have these, uh, actually it was this row where you have the cables interconnecting all the way across to really be below the bust. So I somehow made it both too big in that it kind of was supposed to fit more like this, I think, I don't know. Um, or like this, I kind of just stretched it in many ways over the body to determine, you know, what would be even more grand. And I designed the opulent plunge bra. It is a plunge bra, so it's very revealing of the chest. I'm actually wearing it now with this linen shirt that's very open. I felt like maybe I could show it to you this way. Um, but you can see that it has that twist that crosses at the center front and with that cable motif it twists up at the top there so it is very revealing and I have been beating this bra up I've worn it almost every day for two weeks which is a lot of wear because <laughs> I really wanted it to not just appear to be exactly what it should, but to really work as it should. And I've made some improvements since the very first draft of this pattern, which I'm wearing right now. Um, I made this while I wrote version one, and I sent that out to testers, and they worked on it the last two weeks. And in the past week, I've redrafted newer bust shaping for all sizes so that it's even more inclusive, because prior to that, the cups were a lot more uniform across um, a greater portion of it. So I've changed that so that for the largest bust sizes, the ones that in the beginning before testing, I couldn't comprehend as well. Thanks to my very generous test knitters out there. All of you, I am so, so grateful to you for working this pattern and sharing all of your thoughts and experiences. I know making a bra and then potentially having to show it to someone is an incredibly vulnerable thing. And I'm just so 
proud of all my testers like showing up and doing it and making this pattern what it really could be and I'm really proud of it so far and I hope that if there's still any issue about it fitting any particular person we're sorting it out or it will be sorted out before it's published publicly and finalized but I'm really excited about this and I've done a few like so many things I can think of like four or five modifications to it since this conception because you can see it is like I wouldn't say drapey but like there's room and if you're really active and you're not layering something over this you could easily get a TPO if you know what I'm saying no one wants that so we have included a few things one for um, those with that concern um, like I do I have this keyhole modification that brings it from crossing as low as here to closer to here so it's more of like your sort of general bralette design um, and it'll kind of hold the shape better I think across the front and then I found two in knitting with a superwash yarn that I could add more notes about superwash yarn specifically like suggesting to go down a needle size because of the stretch factor and then also like I know that I'm going to knit my straps shorter next time because the straps seem to stretch a lot with a superwash yarn um, whereas with all of my woolen spun bralettes the straps just get shorter and shorter the more I wear them because they felt tighter and tighter and it's like no matter what I do whether I wash in the machine on accident or I don't the straps just get shorter and I I know that superwash is very different I just didn't know it was that different so definitely knitting shorter straps next time there is a modification too if like I would say um, you kind of have to know in advance but you could cross your straps in the back and that's just a little bit more insurance that they won't overstretch like that and it makes them fit a lot more snug across the front if you cross um, there's two modifications for larger busts well I guess one is for larger one is for any bust um, but I've added an optional repeat of the cables below um, which was an idea sparked by a tester that just went ahead and did it themselves we did it slightly differently um, but I wrote those instructions there for those of you that have like a really heavy bust that needs more support than just an inch and a half or two inches you'll have a little bit more fabric below to hold that shape in I also added a modification for all testers where if you're casting on and knitting the size that best matches your rib circumference from the start you can switch to begin knitting an alternative size at the bust shaping so it's kind of a choose your own adventure pattern where you can choose you know the circumference of the chest and the ribs and then optimize for whatever size bust you have because that's variable from person to person it's really hard to create a pattern that's just one two three four five six seven sizes that fits everyone when you have you know chest and bust like there's so much variety among people so I feel like we've tweaked the pattern with the help of testing to make sure that that's sorted and I am really excited for it to come out I hope that it might only be another week or two of course I will share that with you all on social media if you haven't already found me on Ravelry Instagram or even Twitter my name is Taylor E Owen on those platforms and I'm Taylor Knits on TikTok one thing that I want to add is I am creating YouTube video tutorials of how to do certain portions of this pattern so that it is very straightforward and no knitter is left behind. I know that it might be an intimidating pattern with all the shaping and all of the row by row instructions and all of the cables. It is an opulent design and so I want it to be as accessible and digestible as possible so if you haven't already make sure you do subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because I'm going to upload to my channel soon video tutorials that are brief and concise this is my newer uh not version but um I'm now knitting the final version of the pattern as it's written and I've incorporated that keyhole so if you're wondering what that looks like it crosses around the front and I think that's really cute this yarn too it's a it's an 80 10 10 superwash blend of a uh, superwash merino and cashmere and nylon it gets kind of fuzzy quickly again I've been beating this yarn 
up. I wear it every day almost and I don't think I stink. I've washed it at least once. So sometimes I, maybe I wear it to bed but I don't wear it to work, like that sort of thing. I've been getting a ton of wear out of this bra. I'm really excited to have another one knit with one size smaller needle. I could see myself knitting even more of these. It's not that complicated. In fact, the cross design is just like crucial to keeping a rib from stretching at the chest. I don't know about you, if you've ever knit any bralette patterns, but mine, if I haven't destroyed them with the washing machine, they just like blow out in the front and I can like pinch like two inches of fabric off the front of that garment where it's just like too big because of what happens when it's worn. And that's one thing that this pattern design doesn't do. In fact, it's the chest alone that hasn't stretched at all. Um, it's the cups that have stretched the most with this fiber in particular, I think. Um, but also the general nature of the design is if it stretches at all, it stretches kind of across the front here and you might have too much space in the front hence the keyhole modification, which is optional because not every chest is gonna need that extra coverage. They might have more to fill in, so to speak. So this is really exciting to me. I'm really happy to almost have this finished and out there. You can see there's um, like bust shaping as well. It's not just a tube, it's quite intricate, I think, but also it's a five page pattern. It's not, 19 pages long like you might think it would be given the ornate design of this opulent plunge five pages sign me up i can't i'm too dyslexic to process a 19 page document i just i won't <laughs> i can't <laughs> i wish i could honestly but i say that and then i'm also knitting um michelle wong's bro cardigan which is insane look at these cables they're so gorgeous haven't worked on this in weeks this is like my weekend knitting um that i can only really devote time and attention to once i'm willing to sit and figure out what row was i on and what row am i doing now and how am i going to do it a cable pattern like this that is like changing it up every row you go is very different than knitting a cable pattern like this one where you're just repeating like one complicated row here and then here and then here where it's a little predictable because you can count the number of rows between them or um, you know you have simple cables that repeat every other four stitches uh, four knit stitches or every third row you do that same thing again like this is it looks complicated but this is a very simple cable um, whereas this it's just there's so much happening. It's a really broad conversation of cables. This one is, it's like a melody. It, re it has repetition and that makes it a little bit sweeter, I think, in the process of making. So um, this, I, I do have this version of the pattern written, but it's only in the, my one size because I didn't take the time to grade it. Although if those of you out there really feel like you want this instead of the plunge, and there's like a desire for a tank top different version of it, I'd be happy to figure it out. I just haven't done that yet. And it's not a huge priority of mine. That's kind of what I'll be making. I am also working on Kate Davies Ducat sweater. This is a raglan pullover. And I'm working this with Isegar's silk mohair and Elsa Wool's woolen spun Hormo fingering weight yarn. I chose 10% light gray, I think. So it's this gorgeous light heather gray and the Isegar mohair silk is in the color six. It's this peachy cream kind of color. It's like a soft pastel peach. And I feel like this just is so my vibe right now, I guess. I'm thinking that I, it might become a cardigan with a very simple, um, button band. I think I might even though kind of leave live stitches and then steek and then well bind off the steek stitches and then steek the front and then pick up stitches along the button bands and the collar together so like it's this big tube and then I might do something like an I-cord edge or 
ribbing and then an I-cord edge. I don't know. Something fascinatingly weird is my vision. And I, I think too, like when kind of like turning corners in knitting, I like to increase at those corners. So maybe I can do something neat there where it kind of extends a little longer from the hem and in at the collar, but not by too much because I don't want it to be like around my neck. So I don't know, we'll see. I mean, maybe I'll keep it simple, but sometimes the more complicated thing is simple to me if I've never done it before. <laughs> so that's the general plan is no plan. Um, I even thought maybe I would like incorporate a cable along the side to keep it really interesting, but I don't know. I'm, I don't know why I would want to do that to myself right now. <laughs> um, the one project I have without cables involved that, you know, you need a simple project like this when you're knitting cables. No one has that much mental energy. I do want to give you a quick little garden tour through mid-July 2021 and show you what I'm growing in the backyard garden. All right, get ready for a brief garden tour. You can see that the flowers are in full bloom. This box is almost cleared out for fall planting. Everything pretty much fried and dried up. I got this new uh, white daisy here that I've planted in that bare spot where the calendula once was, and these raspberries are spent. Um, you can already tell which canes aren't gonna come back next year because they are done. I think two-year-old canes just flop, so. It, I cut them out in the fall to clean up the garden. The zinnias, I've really been keeping up on cutting them as soon as they bloom so that I just get more and more blooms. Uh, one of them has fallen to the front here among the other plants. You can see I have a volunteer squash plant and some black-eyed Susans that I'm going to transplant out in front come the end of summer once the heat dies down. I might still have rosemary in there that had been buried all summer so it does look like it has some kind of spider mites on it um, but I'll just cut it back and it'll grow and we have cosmos those have been really bright and cheerful this summer and the cattle panels are really filling out we have three cattle panels in our yard here and those are filled with cucumbers and bean plants I just got on sale at Lowe's half off this dying um, little bush and it has all these little seeds. I'm just reseeding this container. I, my compost has like paper chunks in it. I don't know. I spread it too soon, but it's all that I had. So I worked with what I got. I like to chop my nettles down once they start to go to seed. So I finally did that. Um, these are some like kind of junk pots over here waiting for nasturtiums in the fall, maybe some lettuces. And these black-eyed Susans are just wild. The little flies and bugs love those. We have a patch of lemon balm. My yarrow is finally showing since I cut back some of these black-eyed Susans here. And the asparagus is cropping up for its first year. So excited to see how that continues to grow year over year. My basil plants are sliving. My Oregano is doing well. It's been going to seed all summer. I have a little zinnia here that doesn't get quite enough sun. You can tell that it's getting some mold and spotting on the leaves. I think that's because the dew doesn't evaporate early enough. Should be zinning the cat food, so I'm gonna stop her from doing that right now. Hey, get away from there. We feed our feral cats out at the stoop and they don't always eat everything, especially in the heat. We have to try to feed them less. Come on. We have a pawpaw tree right here. It's doing great. The raspberries, again, they really need to be tamed. And we have more basil, some lemon balm. This is a blueberry plant. Oh God, this guy's just destroying my audio right now. And Scab wants to go inside. All right, let's try that again. You can see these cucumbers are blowing up. My dill is growing seed. Maybe it'll self-sow. That St. John's wort really needs to be cut back. The blackberries are ripening. 
this black raspberry is exploding with new canes this year. We're really gonna get a bunch of those next year. And those kale plants didn't take off. Um, they were pretty much shaded most of the time, but I think that they're gonna do well in the fall. So I need to cut some of them back a little bit because I think they have some white fly damage, but Whoa, look at this cucumber. I don't even see her. Hello. Anyway, um, oh, and I have some squash plants growing across here. That's uh, That was a happy accident, and I think I'll forever intentionally plant a squash. I hope I might get an okra this summer, but these get a lot of shade, so they haven't grown up very tall at all. And that is the brief garden tour. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And that is all for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you so much for watching. Again, if you like this content, give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much in growing my channel. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And if you are subscribed, hit that bell to ring so that you get notifications for when I have new content uploaded. I want to thank you again so much for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care.